Welcome back to our Azure Governance series. This is video eight, Naming Standards and Tagging for Contoso. My name is Amy Manley, and I'm working with Eric DeBoard and David Uola on this adventure that Contoso is going through. We're going to see what's in store with their naming and tags on this next slide. So their current state, they've already learned about enrollment hierarchies. They've seen different portals, the billing portal, the Azure portal, learned about subscriptions and the importance of role-based access. Well, now they need to learn about naming and tagging standards in Azure. Since they don't already have them for on-premises, they need to create some so they can have governance around the cloud. And now naming conventions, while they may seem like a simple feat, this can really be a big stalling point. It could be a big point of contention. I've had teams go on days about this. Even Eric and David and myself couldn't really agree at first. <laughs> so real world. Uh, example that it's not always easy, but don't let that be a stalling point. Don't uh, let it block anything. Just make a choice and go. Maybe you can change it later on, but at least get a good starting point. Yeah, Amy, I was just going to mention that too, that um, definitely this is an area where it seems like we get into analysis paralysis where it really doesn't have a huge impact if you just make some decisions and go with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is, absolutely, David and Amy and I had different ideas. But when we landed on a specific idea, then it works just as well as any of the other ideas. So it's just make yeah, a decision to go forward, right? <laughs> and then you can change it. Like Amy said, you can change it right. later. So Exactly. It's not a child you're naming. It might feel like it. But why do we need naming and tagging? Well, consistent naming definitely makes resources easier to locate and identify. They can indicate a role. And then tags can actually further help you evaluate, evaluate what that resource is. It brings additional metadata that you can report on, like cost center, who owns that VM or resource, any compliance requirements on the data inside that resource. Hey, so, Amy. yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, on the second point about adding additional metadata, you know, refresh folks' memory when we've covered cost management. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that we mentioned is the importance of tags because customers are going to want to know um, uh, for chargeback purposes, uh, you know, what a particular department is, 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 is using, right, and where they need to charge that back. So that cost center tag is going to be uh, important, and I see that in many, many customers leveraging. Definitely. And tag pairs can be searched across many resource groups. So if you have an application across many resource groups, you can search on that tag and bring it all together. And I'm just going to mention one more thing here about tags and naming conventions, and that is that sometimes you might feel like you're doing redundant things with tags and naming conventions. For example, you might have production in your naming convention and also a tag for the environment. But that's perfectly okay because the tags will bring different benefits than the naming alone. So I just wanted to mention that. Definitely. That's a good point. So what we did and Contoso did was we started with the website that Microsoft provides on best practices. And again, this isn't written in stone. You can start with this and make it your own, but it's a good way to get started if you don't know how to get started. Just choose what's right for your organization. So. To get into the naming and tagging, I have to briefly speak about networking because we're going to have some shared services in our naming model. So there's what's called the hub and spoke model, and you can go to this URL and look at the PDF on the virtual data center model. But Contoso will be setting up a shared network for items like Active Directory, management tools, backups, or any kind of jump box, any shared service. And then They'll, as determined by the cloud architecture team, there'll be spokes deployed, maybe an app for research or an app for another department that could be peered to the shared service or not. And we have a diagram following. So in the middle is the hub VNet, the shared services, and then you see it peering out to the different spokes. You can still have isolated VNets or isolated apps, but Again, it's good to have a shared service model, too, so you can authenticate or run backups. Hey, and I'll just mention here, too, that, you know, some organizations don't do this hub-and-spoke model. They keep it, you know, to a single VNet, uh, and they put all their services in there. This is just another option that you have if you want to, you know, sort of make your VNets more autonomous from each other, and maybe you have different departments that are 
um, doing their own thing with VNets and you've given them address space, but then your VNet in the hub is the connection back to on-premises, for example. Exactly. Yeah, and the, and the other thing I'm going to mention here, Amy, is you know, just for folks to just look at the outer uh, boxes there, uh, you see this says hub virtual network, and then mm -hmm. within the virtual network, you can carve out uh, subnets. And you just keep that in mind because in the next few slides, we're going to talk about naming conventions for both of those. But just uh, just be aware. So Trust has decided, good for them, on naming standards for their resource groups. So using that website, we have department-environment-service-shortname-rg for resource group. And this can be up to 90 characters. So some examples were the IT shared services, prod-storage-rg for storage resource group. And then there's ITSS dash prod dash net dash rg and that's going to be where our network services are and as you can see i don't have to keep repeating but we'll have their vm resource group and but i would like to point out the ad resource group why does active directory have its own resource group why isn't it in the vm resource group well that's for our back we want to control who has access to those resources obviously domain controllers aren't something you want the general population to have access to. So we can control that by using a resource group as a container. And another way is to create a resource group for a specific app. That's way the entire life cycle for the app is within the resource group. You have disk, VM, storage, backup, all within one resource group. And I'll add something here, Amy, and that is that, you know what, we haven't talked about resource groups yet during our governance series. And that's because naming standards is sort of a chicken and egg scenario with a lot of the other things we're doing. But just stay tuned. That's in the next video. We're going to talk about why you create resource groups and what they mean. Thanks. And here's our naming standard for VMs. We kept it simple with department-role-number. For Windows, it can be up to 15 characters. I believe Linux, it's 64. An example would be the ITSS-DC-01 for domain controller or ITSS-SQL-01. And then the naming standard for storage and managed disks. So for the storage account, we went with department, environment, service, and number. Note you can't have any dashes in there, and it's only up to 24 characters. So we did ITSS prod backup store 01. And VM managed disks, it just makes sense to use the VM name. Even when you're deploying it, you'll see the VM name pop in as you add the data disk. So you can have the VM name without any hyphens, underscore data disk 00, and then keep going, 01, 02, depending on how many disks you need. And just one point here, and kind of getting ahead of ourselves, of myself again, but a lot of customers out there, maybe you've deployed VMs and you notice that the disks have names that were automatically created. Well, if you create your VMs in the portal, that's what's going to happen. If you use scripts, though, you get the ability to uh, name them the way you want to. So just FYI. Good point. And then the naming standard for networking. So service short name, whatever you decide that is, and then dash VNet. So we have that shared service hub VNet. So the ITSS dash hub dash VNet. And that is contained in that net resource group. So that shared services prod Network resource group has our hub VNet. And within that hub VNet, I'm going to try not to be confusing here, we'll have the subnets, the management tools subnet and the AD subnet, because those are shared services. Another example would be app XYZ VNet. It's not in the, um, the prodnet resource group, it's in its own. So that's part of that lifecycle application in its own resource group. So if we haven't mentioned before, standards are everything. If you don't have anything to start with, go to the website. There's a lot out there. There's a lot on Microsoft's documentation. And then create a template. You can create it in Excel. You can create it in your favorite website tool choice. Um, just get it down on paper, get agreement, and get it as a golden standard for your team. So Contoso has created a tagging template that they think is important for their VMs. Like we mentioned before, it's metadata that goes on to the VM. So we might have basic VM names, but we also have these tag pairs that we can use to further drill down on what these VMs or resources are used for. You can use up to 15 per resource or resource group. 
and I broke them down into categories for you. So we have these business tags like cost center. David mentioned chargeback. That's very important in a lot of universities and education environments. Responsible party, who do you contact if you need to patch something or something's wrong? Who is this managed by? It could be a group, hopefully a group, versus a person. Application name, environment, is it in dev or prod? And then security tags, like the data profile, is it confidential information? Is there student information on it? Does it need certain security um, resources around it? And then automation tags. I really like these because they allow you to do automation, such as power off your dev environment, or what we see is the maintenance window, again, for patching or when that VM can take a downtime. And something I'll mention about this particular slide, Amy, is that you know naming conventions, whether you have them or not, your resources are going to have names. And they, they may be easy or they may be difficult, depending on whether or not you chose naming conventions. Tagging is a little bit different. You don't have to use tags at all. Uh, and so these are, uh, you know, we kind of alluded to this earlier, these are an additional layer uh, to even give you more capabilities. So I just want to mention they're not required, but, you know, certainly at least in the long term, you're going to want to use them. Uh, and you can go back and change tags and modify them after the fact. So uh, don't get too hung up on choosing these if, they're, if it's holding you up from get going forward either. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely useful for search and reporting, and you can even make them required if you wanted to. Yeah, so not only is it yeah useful for reporting purposes, like we mentioned, Amy, but like for example, for automation, uh, there's there's other tools that you can leverage. For example, there's a service for patching VMs, and you can leverage those tags to, like you said, either it could be a maintenance, right? So if you wanted to patch a, a a certain subset of VMs at a certain point in time, then that other service can leverage these tags to do that. And if you have, uh, let's say, a dev, a dev test labs, and you want to shut down some VMs at a certain you know, time of the day, then having those tags in automation uh, also can help. So it can be used for many things. Yeah. Exactly. So next steps, Contoso will proceed about learning about those resource groups we mentioned, and actually deploy infrastructure using these naming standards and their tagging template. So stay tuned for the next video.